Hello, everyone, and welcome back to SEC Roundup. My name is Nick Morgan. I'm a partner at the law firm of Paul Hastings in the Investigations and White Collar Defense Group. Uh, also with me, as always, is my partner from Paul Hastings as well, Tom Zaccaro. Tom, hello. Good morning, Nick. And our special guest today is John Reed Stark. John, how are you doing? Great, Nick. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. Uh, John is, of course, the uh, founder and president of John Reed Stark Consulting. And prior to that, uh, was the uh, founder and chief at the SEC of the Office of Internet Enforcement, which uh, the name has changed multiple times. The, the mission has changed multiple times. But that was a, I remember when we were all at the SEC, that was a groundbreaking uh, achievement at the time, and he was the chief for 11 years. So when we uh, talk about today's topic, which has to do with cybersecurity, we are talking to the right person. So John, thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what we wanted to talk about today with you, John, is the proposed rule. Uh, and I haven't actually seen whether the public comment period is over, but we're close. So this is getting close yeah. to reality. Um, the proposed rule regarding public company disclosure of right. cybersecurity incidents. Right. Um, and to start things off, Tom, why don't you describe for us at least one aspect of this proposed rule, if you would. Sure, Nick. So uh, with the increased frequency of, of uh, damaging cybersecurity attacks, like we've seen in the last year or two, and the, the, the significant adverse impact those attacks have on companies and including um, financial and reputational. Uh, cybersecurity has been a, a significant, critical, and rather urgent initiative of the SEC. And this rule, I think, reflects that urgency and importance. So the, the SEC has, has adopted a proposed rule, not final yet, so let's go through the comment period. But the, the rule essentially requires faster disclosure of cyber uh, security breaches, cyber breaches uh, of a company's uh, network. And um, what the rule would require is disclosure on a form 8K of a material cyber breach within four days of the determination of materiality. So if a company has a cyber breach, if they determine uh, it was material, uh, they're required to make disclosure. What's materiality? There's a variety of things the commission has discussed in the past. It could be uh, reputational. It could be the, the hacker had access to uh, personal privileged information of, of uh, retail consumers. It could be the uh, uh, presence or, or the filing of class actions or regulatory risks. So there are a number of things which go into materiality. Those are just a few. Uh, but if a company determines uh, it has been the target of a cyber attack. And if it determines that the cyber attack is material, it's got four days to make a public disclosure on a form AK. And basically what the, what the rule would require in that disclosure is basically what happened, how it was discovered, is the attack ongoing or has it been stopped? Uh, a brief description of the cyber attack, uh, whether it resulted in any uh, data that was stolen, particularly any personal uh, information, PPI, um, the effect on company operations, um, and and finally, uh, whether the company is or is in the process of remediating uh, the incident. And those who us who dealt with the SEC uh, in these types of cases, these are the questions the SEC will start asking the minute the cyber breach is reported. But now there'll be an affirmative obligation within four days to disclose it. Thanks for that summary, Tom. I mean, it's, it's one thing to sort of write these things down in a proposed rule, um, and then there's the real world. Um, and that's why we have you here, John. We wanted to get your thoughts on this sure. proposed rule, sort of what are the practical implications, the challenges sure. companies are going to face, and, and other thoughts you may have. Sure, sure. Four days is it's so funny, isn't it, Nick? Where, where does the SEC come up with this? Someone says, mm. I think, um, yeah, four days seems a reasonable time. It sounds right. <laughs> I mean, look, the rule, first of all, pretty much says what's already required. Okay, if something's material, you're supposed to disclose it, whether it's a cybersecurity incident or whether it's the loss of a contract or otherwise. And what constitutes materiality 
you know, that's, that's always equivocal. It's always muddled. It's always opaque. Um, and it's a question that's always plagued financial firms, lawyers, their lawyers, and everybody else. And it'll continue to plague everybody. But I guess here the SEC has said pretty much any data security incident, because the definition is very broad, is going to be material. And it, just like they could say any cybersecurity practice is not reasonable. It's a very, very vague standard. There's quantitative materiality. There's qualitative. We all learn those kinds of things in law school. But the bottom line is most data security incidents, it's going to be difficult to argue that they're not material, though that happens all the time. You're, you're, you're one of the first responders, which is what I do, to a data security incident. And there's always people in the room who say, well, data breaches happen to everyone. Cyber attacks are inevitable. Becoming the victim of a cyber attack is inevitable. It's like me saying, I'm going to send my kids to school and they are not going to get a cold this year. You know, that is, it's, 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 it's absolutely something that is not preventable. Cybersecurity is one big, huge oxymoron. So the problem is the SEC has recently, in a whole spate of cases, turned cybersecurity failures into some sort of major uh, prosecutorial issue. Because the reality is you're really taking a victim of a cyber attack and you're making them a victim again. And the hyperbole is off the charts. I remember after Equifax, Senator Schumer said this was the greatest case of corporate malfeasance since Enron. And it, it was just absurd to me. Well, I'm not trying to be political because I, 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 I'm not political, but it was just absurd to me. So the, the reality is, though, OK, you sit around, you're at the table. Somebody says, hey, this is not material. It happens every day. And we don't even know really what happened. And someone else says, yeah, but the SEC wants us to disclose in four days. And if we don't do it, we're in trouble. And if it's a ransomware attack, you're going to want to tell law enforcement right away because you might be making payment to a terrorist. And OFAC sanctions, the, the recent OFAC release says that if you do uh, contact law enforcement and some other things, those are mitigating factors in case you're making that ransomware payment to a terrorist. And remember, you have to prove that that ransomware attacker is not a terrorist. How are you going to prove that? It's like proving you know, what a poltergeist is wearing. So these are complicated issues. But on the other hand, Nick, Tom, you guys could get people through this, I think, pretty easily. Because the SEC is pandering here. People, for whatever reason, say companies are not disclosing their cyber attacks, which is kind of ridiculous. Because if you read the 129-page rule, in it, the SEC actually confesses that they have no idea if companies are or are not reporting cyber attacks. There's no empirical data along those lines. There's not even anecdotal data. There's just newspaper stories. And that's what sometimes triggers rulemakings. But let's say that the SEC's heart's in the right place, because I do believe that. They want companies to have better cyber. They're not convinced that they're doing everything that they can. So in that instance, the security, the data security incident happens, you sit down and you figure out what the disclosure should be. Well, here's the issue. The SEC on the one hand says, look, we don't want boilerplate in this disclosure. We don't want to see the same old boilerplate every time. That shows that you're not thinking about it and that it's routine and nobody pays attention to it. Again, as if anybody really pays attention to disclosures generally, but they don't want boilerplate. But they also say, hey, we understand you can't uh, disclose the technical details of a cyber attack because that would tip off other attackers on how to get through to your network. So the SEC recognizes those things, but they don't really propose a solution. Well, thank you for your insights. Why don't we do this? Why don't we leave it there for now uh, and make a date to talk again in a year? And we'll go look at look and see what the enforcement uh, actions around this new rule look like after your years gone by and see what we have to say. So that's what the GAO and the IG's office is doing. So why don't we join them? That would be fun to be on that side. So I agree. <laughs> All right. All right. The date. One year from now, SEC Roundup, we'll do it again. John, hey, thank you so much for joining us, Tom. Right. A pleasure to see you as always. Uh, that's yeah, it. Of course. This, thank uh, you. This episode sure. of uh, SEC Roundup, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Outstanding, gents. Take care. Great talking to you.